how Saudi Arabia is turning desert into huge farmlands. This is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Despite the fact that Saudi Arabia is one of only six countries without permanent rivers and receives only four inches of rain per year, it sends vegetables, fruits, and divided goods all over the world. Saudi Arabia was one of the world's major wheat exporters even in the 1990s. If we zoom in, we can see that there is something interesting going on in this country. There are many large circular greeneries scattered around the desert, even in the heart of it. These are farmlands after all. The huge size of agricultural projects in Saudi Arabia has been massive for the perspective in 1961. It had 11,400 square kilometers of arable land, controlling for 0.5% of the country. And in 2016, it has nearly 35,000 square kilometers, more than growing the amount of fertile land compared to 60 years ago. Before moving to next, hit the like button and subscribe, and turn on the notification settings not to miss new videos. I've been planning quite a few videos for the next and I hope you will like them too. Thanks to everybody who is supporting the analyst. So, enjoy the video. In the last 60 years, Saudi Arabia has changed 24,000 square kilometers of desert worthless ground into fertile soil, an area larger than Belgium and Armenia combined. In this framework, 24,000 square kilometers is more than twice the size of Slovenia and two times the size of Qatar. And the puzzle is how this dry country turned large stretches of land into productive farmland. And how can it produce, let alone export agricultural products, with only 1.5% arable land? Most people associate the Middle East and Saudi Arabia with burning sun, limitless oceans of sand dunes, and one of the world's most challenging climates. But not so long ago, around 10,000 years ago, this was not the case. And before that, it was a country of rolling grasslands, jungles and jungles, all of which were flooded by torrential monsoon rains, exactly like the rest of tropical Southeast Asia. You might be wondering how they managed to get so much water to support large-scale agricultural. Engineers dig into old river channels currently buried by sand seeds of the fossil waters were trapped in agri-fires as deep as one kilometer below the ground, and it was stored in the place of loanwords or air box during periods of wetter climates. Saudi Arabia sits on no large of not only oil but also water, and it has been extracting water from the Glacier Lake Echo Fire to enable large-scale cultivation and milk production between 10,000 and 2 million years ago. Crop irrigation and farming in general is necessary to maintain an abundance of food for a rising population. Crop irrigation and farming require a lot of water and energy. These are expensive and becoming harder to obtain. As a result, farmers must manage both water and energy. When irrigating crops, good irrigation management strategies are required to save water and energy. The center pivot irrigation method is one of the greatest ways to manage water and energy. Frank Sidebar, a Colorado farmer, invented the center pivot system, which is now widely used as one of the most efficient ways to enhance water delivery to farmland center pivot irrigation irrigates in a circular way around a central pivot point, allowing producers to administer water fertilizer chemicals and herbicides. This flexibility increases irrigation efficiency by allowing a single piece of technology to perform multiple roles. In relation to other irrigation technologies such as flood irrigation, Center pivot machines have been utilized in irrigation for decades in many nations, and they boost yields and reduce water waste. Saudi Arabia has been building center pivot irrigation for 50 years. They have, however, nearly controlled an echo fire the size of Lake Erie. Due to the limited rainfall on the Arabian Peninsula, fires are not being refilled. The main winds are from the west and carry almost no moisture from northern Africa as it passes through. 
Furthermore, the mountains on the western side of Saudi Arabia form the Arabian Shield, and most rainwater fall on the western slopes and run back to the sea unused, therefore. Saudi Arabia is facing a huge shortage of water due to its echo fires, with the prospect of its agricultural collapsing as a result. To avoid a crisis like this, Saudi Arabia has purchased farmland in the United States and Argentina. Indonesia, many African countries, and Saudi Arabia are among the top international buyers of agricultural land. However, there are certain natural ways to convert deserts into agricultural land. As previously stated, the most of the rain falls on the Arabian region's western edge. In western Saudi Arabia, there was an interesting experiment in the area of albedo, and, as we have discussed, it explains how African countries are building the Great Green Wall to avoid deserts, and how overgrazing by animals is one of the main causes of fertile area, becoming genuinely deserted. Because of development and industrialization, there were pastoral nomadic Bedouin tribes around in the Albeda area, but the UN tribes were forced by legislation to settle in one location. The territory had been overpopulated, and the previously fertile terrain had become a rocky desert to the royal Saudi princes. Was it because the community recognized the crisis and started on an eight-year development initiative directed by Stanford University perm culturist Neil Spackman and Harvard University professor of biology Mona Hamdi? Spackman spent his life improving communities by constructing rock slopes, check dams, and carving. Wind small ditches in the ground to collect rainwater and form a stream. To duplicate the nature of the project, they built a birdhouse, a pigeon house, and planted drought-resistant trees. However, funding was canceled in 2016, and the region was devastated by a two-year drought. The majority of the trees died out, putting the project in peril, but rain dropped again in 2018 and 2019, allowing the project to continue. In comparison to the arid desert, the terraces and dams that scientists have constructed turn the entire area into thriving grassland after rains. Prior to the project's launch, rainwater was trapped and the land was given life by hillside terraces. It's now lush and green and brimming with life. The meter area is a geographic pattern, which means it follows the same pattern as all of the region's rivers, as well as the whole west coast of the United States. Watersheds in the Arabian Peninsula account for 90% of all freshwater flows to the Red Sea during flooding periods, with no capturing or use of the water in the olive groves, for example. A single flood that runs to the sea is sufficient to cultivate. For three years, 130 million trees will be planted. By harvesting and managing flood water, Albi the project is a powerful illustration of how to turn a desert into a plantation overflowing with life and greenery. If this project be scaled up to cover the entire west coast of Saudi Arabia, more than 30 million acres, 121,000 square kilometers of land might be converted to agricultural land. It carries a lot of weight. This involves additional more land than the Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, and Denmark combined. It will require billions of dollars and years of effort, but Saudi Arabia's agricultural potential may be doubled by at least six times, resulting in a threefold increase in GDP. Rainfall in the region has increased by up to 5%. The great majority of carbon emissions are stored in the rich ground, as we explained in the video about reversing desert in Africa by building a massive green wall. Carbon dioxide will be discharged into the atmosphere if the land dries out and becomes a desert. So, if the soil comes back to life in this situation, it will trap massive volumes of carbon dioxide in the ground. As a result, this is a win-win situation. Saudi Arabia has well-thought-out strategies for providing fresh water to its people. Desalinating seawater into fresh water, as we discussed in this Aladdin seawater video, 
is an energy-intensive process that employs natural gas and coal. Modern distillation plants, on the other hand, are largely heat-resistant, meaning they use coal and natural gas, both of which emit carbon dioxide because of global warming. The second approach, membrane-based reverse osmosis, which works on electricity, coal, and natural gas, is no longer an option. Reverse osmosis, on the other hand, is feasible because nuclear energy may be used to generate electricity. In addition, we discussed how nuclear power is the cheapest and safest kind of energy in our film. So, if you want to understand more about it, please do so. So, in order to turn the land green, we need water. To get water, we create country plants for an efficient plant that does not generate carbon dioxide, and we need green plants energy. So nuclear energy is one of the finest possibilities for powering this entire nation's facility. As a result, everything is linked. Thanks for watching and huge thanks to everybody. Hit the like button and subscribe and turn on the notification settings. Don't forget to comment your ideas too, it will make us to improve our channel. So, until next time, take care everyone.